Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police continue to look for the driver of a big rig who was involved in a deadly crash on the far northwest side. Late this morning, they found that 18 wheeler parked in a downtown street some 20 miles from the crash scene at Interstate 10 in Dominion Road. As Katrina Weber reports, police say the truck had some obvious evidence attached to it. Within minutes of this early morning crash, San Antonio police were calling it a crime. They say the compact Ford was rear-ended after 5.30 this morning by an 18-wheeler that didn't stop. The 40-year-old woman behind the wheel of the car was killed. I live right back here, and I heard some crashes as I was coming out of my garage. Scott Marroquin was heading out for a bike ride when he rode by the scene. He ended up calling 911. You could hear everyone running over. I assume there's a bunch of broken glass and metal up there. Police, meanwhile, were on the case investigating and also searching from the sky for the big rig. Hours later, a phone call about a suspicious truck would lead them downtown. A banged up big rig parked at Crockett and Bowie Streets. You can see extensive damage on this 18 wheeler and still pieces of the victim's car are caught underneath the uh, the rear wheel. Police believe the driver had to know he was dragging something with him. They say he drove this way for about 20 miles. Police detained a man who they found with the truck, but he told them he was asleep during the crash, that the driver ran away. They didn't think much of it, maybe that they nudged something. As it turned out, it was much more than a nudge. Investigators plan to view surveillance video to see if the man's story holds up. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. In the meantime, police have released a description of the driver. They say he's about six foot three with short dreadlocks. He is supposed to be wearing a burgundy shirt and gray slacks. Police are still trying to figure out how a light pole was knocked down on the northwest side. They tell us two drivers hit that pole after it fell and a third driver just missed it. Officers say the light pole fell sometime between before 4, 530 this morning on the I-10 access road between Callahan and Medical Drive. The drivers that hit the down pole had damage to their vehicles, including flat tires and front end damage. Drivers said they didn't see the pole until it was too late. I was uh, heading to work and I was coming this direction. I saw the light pole on the street laying down and when I saw it, I had no time to react. So I tried to move out of the way, but I uh, moved, I uh, ran over it. One of the drivers did tell us she injured her arm. A shooting investigation remains open this noon and police have hit a dead end and now they're hoping you can help provide some fresh leads. Take a look at your screen. This is the person police are looking for. Officers say it was back on May 12th when someone shot at a home on the 8700 block of Glenmont multiple times. Police think this is that person. We're told that the suspect took off in a mid 90s gold Toyota Camry with dark tinted windows and missing a front passenger side hubcap. The suspect is believed to be 18 to 23 years of age, about 5 to 6, 510 to 6 feet tall and weighing between 140 and 160 pounds. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The Texas Supreme Court on Friday handed out a ruling that rejected the University of the Incarnate Word's case for immunity in a wrongful death lawsuit filed by the parents of Cameron Reedus. This ruling sends the case back to the state district court, allowing the lawsuit from Reedus' family to move forward. 23-year-old Reedus was shot and killed by a UIW campus police officer during a traffic stop back in December of 2013. The university claimed that its police force should be considered a government unit and that the court should therefore dismiss all claims. The Regis family is arguing, however, that the UIW Police Department is part of the university and not the government. Reopening Texas, it's been a slow process jump starting the economy in the Lone Star State. Today, more businesses will be reopening their doors as part of phase two of Governor Abbott's plan. Bars, bowling alleys, and bingo halls are some of the latest businesses that are allowed to reopen at 25% capacity across the state. Meanwhile, restaurants can now open at 50% capacity, up from the 25% that was allowed under Phase 1. For all reopened businesses, interactive areas like arcade games should stay closed. 
And those reopenings come on the heels of other businesses that resumed operations this week, including daycare centers, gyms and personal care services like massage and tattoo parlors. For people who might be interested in going out to a bar, there are a few things to know. One of the biggest is dancing and other close contact interactions are discouraged. And there are other recommendations. The state is encouraging customers to sit at tables, not the bar. And there is and they're saying there should be no more than six people per table. Tables should also be socially distanced and the bar should provide disposable food menus and single use glasses. And take a look at this. Hundreds of people lined up outside Cowboys Dance Hall early this morning. Here in the video, you can see everyone in line. We're not wearing masks. Everyone received temperature checks at the door before allowed to be going inside. And as we mentioned, bowling alleys are also back in business. But what measures are these businesses with high contact points and rental equipment implementing to help stop the spread of COVID-19? Well, Lisa Barrera visited Bowl and Barrel at the Rim to learn more of what you may encounter during your next family outing. Sanitation supplies for customers outnumber the number of bowling lanes available at Bowl and Barrel. We will have sanitizer on every single table um, when they come in, and so People will be able to sanitize after every throw down the lane. Under the governor's strike force to open Texas, entertainment venues like bowling alleys that offer rental equipment must take cleaning a step further. Every single ball is sanitized before and after each guest leaves uh, by one of our staff members to include the finger holes. Every lane, every table, every chair will be wiped down, sanitized. Uh, before and after each guest leaves. While the process to clean rental shoes remains the same, their rotation will be reduced. Not only are we disinfecting, but we are not recycling the shoes for a minimum of one hour. Tables and lanes will also be limited to ensure social distancing between groups. We're obviously using every other lane. Every ball return will only be used by one family at a time. We have minimized to eight balls per lane. Every ball has a different size, so if you want a different ball when you're here, all you have to do is ask a staff member. We'd be happy to get that for you. To celebrate their reopening, Bull and Barrel is offering specials, including for some of their youngest customers. 11 to 4, uh, so kids can come in, they can bowl, they can have lunch, get a drink for $10. Uh, you know, we're also looking to, if you had a birthday during COVID and you were not able to celebrate it, uh, we want you to come here and celebrate it here, and there's free bowling involved with that as well. Bowl and Barrel is once again open, and due to the limited lanes available, they ask customers to take the sanitation process into account as it could affect their waiting time. Reporting from the Rim, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. The Texas Department of Public Safety will slowly reopen driver's license offices over the next few weeks in four phases. Here in San Antonio, appointments can be made starting at 1 p.m. on May 26th for up to six months in advance. The actual office opens on May 29th. It will be open to customers who currently do not have a driver's license, commercial driver's license, a learner permit, or ID card, as well as those who need a driver's test. In addition, DPS has extended expiration dates. The extension remains in effect until phase four is implemented, according to the release. In Bear County, there are now more than 2,300 cases of COVID-19 and deaths increased again for a total of 64. And now there's new questions about the dr drug President Trump says he has been taking along with zinc to prevent COVID-19. ABC's Inez De La Catera is in Washington with more. It's an unproven drug in the fight against COVID-19, but President Trump has touted hydroxychloroquine as a game changer, even claiming to be taking the drug along with zinc with the approval of the White House physician. I'm taking it, hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. But this morning, a new study by the medical journal The Lancet, reviewing nearly 15,000 people given the drug and finding hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, regardless of whether the antibiotic azithromycin is added, is linked to a much higher risk of death in coronavirus patients. The study also found those taking the anti-malaria drugs to treat COVID-19 face a significantly higher risk of developing a type of irregular heart rhythm that can lead to sudden cardiac arrest. The research was based on a retrospective analysis of existing cases, not a controlled randomized study, but it is the largest analysis of the drug to date. I had a two-week regimen of uh, hydroxychloroquine. 
And I've taken it, I think, just about two weeks. I think it's another day. So, and I'm still here. I'm still here. The FDA recommends against the use of hydroxychloroquine outside of hospitals and clinical trials. Experts now warning of a possible second wave as the nation begins to reopen. CDC Director Robert Redfield not ruling out a second lockdown, saying, I can't guarantee. What I can say is that we are committed to using the time that we have now to get this nation as overprepared as possible. President Trump insisting. Whether it's an ember or a flame, we're going to put it out. But uh, we're not closing our country. All 50 states have eased some form of social distancing restrictions ahead of Memorial Day. The New York Times is now reporting cases are increasing in at least seven states. In Esdela Guterra, ABC News, Washington. Coming up in a few minutes with Larry Mears in sports. Steph Curry spending a lot of time at home taking care of the kids, like changing diapers. So now he is singing about it. It's Memorial Day weekend, and we are remembering those who lost their lives defending our country. After the break, how USAA is honoring those fallen heroes through a virtual project. Welcome back. It's 1213. Many people can confuse Memorial Day with Veterans Day. However, USAA is determined to educate the public on the significance of Memorial Day. This year, the company is honoring fallen heroes virtually. We spoke with the company about how it's adapted during this pandemic to continue its tradition. A poppy worn is a hero honored. It's the universal symbol of remembering those that have died defending our country. But why the poppy? Uh, back in World War I, a Canadian army doctor buried his friend in Flanders Field during the war and wrote a poem. Retired U.S. Navy Vice Admiral and now USAA Senior Vice President John Byrd explains that in the poem, the author wrote about how the poppies blow among the many rows of crosses. Because of that poem, he says it's known in many countries as a symbol of remembrance. It's through those poppies that USAA has honored fallen heroes on Memorial Day for the past two years through a temporary poppy wall of honor installation on the National Mall near the Korean Way. The wall is filled with 645,000 artificial poppies, one for each life lost in the line of duty since World War I. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, that event will be virtual this year. So we have a website, poppyandmemory.com. They can visit, learn about the poppy, the poppy wall, the men and women, the history of these conflicts. Admiral Byrd says the virtual event encourages online visitors to remember our fallen heroes through social media posts. He says he hopes the virtual poppy wall will continue to educate the public on the importance of honoring those that make the ultimate sacrifice. We as a country need to show how much we respect that and how much we value those that give up their lives for us. So it goes to our national character and it's critically important that we take yet but one day a year to remember those fallen. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. We well, are also encouraged to share the hashtag honor through action on your social media pages about what Memorial Day means to you. You can find the link to Poppy and Memorial right now on KSAT.com. Outside with live camp could be a very interesting Memorial Day weekend. Little sun here, little rain there, maybe a heavy rain downpour over there. It looks hazy right now. Well, it's humid, and, and you guys are right. And that's a great way to describe it, David. It's going to be sort of hard to pinpoint when and where this rain's going to fall, but we do think we're going to get some rain over the weekend and even into next week. It becomes more of an active pattern. The aquifer has been bit of benefiting lately from the rainfall. It's up three tenths of a foot to 660, actually up to 665 even. In your pollen count, mold is high. Of course, with the rain, mold does jump up. It's at 1,050. Grass is low. We're going to talk about that weekend forecast coming up. Welcome back. Let's go back in history a little bit. Uh, it was five years ago on uh, May 24th, so we're almost there to the anniversary, that we had the Blanco River flood. You probably remember this Wimberley uh, took on a lot of damage from the, the rise in that river and uh, 
sadly uh, did uh, take some lives as well. So this is a good reminder that this time of year we can see some very heavy rain and we got to be careful as we head into Memorial Day weekend and the potential is there for some pockets of heavy rain. Hopefully we won't see flooding like that, uh, but uh, it, it could that we could see some some heavier rain at times uh, right now across the state. Not a whole lot going on. Things are pretty quiet. We saw some showers and storms a little bit earlier this morning around the Austin area, but those have since died down. So now we're just left with cloud cover. And it's partly to mostly cloudy out there. None of those clouds have rain in it, at least not right now. And temperatures sitting at 88 degrees. Dew point is at 71. Southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour. There is a little bit of a heat index too, with it being so humid. 90 in New Braunfels, 86 Boulevardy, 88 Randolph, 91 right now. Pleasanton, 91 in Divine. It's a hot one. 88 Creso Springs, 92 in Catula, pretty similar to the last couple of days. And there's your heat index. This is what it feels like out there. 94 here in town, 99 Gonzalez, 101. Your current feels like temperature there in Catula, pretty brutal. Future cast shows that we're going to see a pretty quiet afternoon, I think. Can't roll out a pop up shower or storm, but it's not likely. As we get into tonight, though, this model does indicate that maybe some storms may drop in from the north, pretty much falling apart by tomorrow morning. We've seen this last couple mornings, some of these complexes of storms traveling long distances and eventually making it to San Antonio or to South Texas. We'll keep an eye on it, about a 30% chance of rain overnight. But as we get into Saturday night, and this is midnight, by the way, midnight Sunday, we could see a line of storms develop out west and then work their way into our area Sunday morning. I think we have a little better shot of seeing rain during this time period uh, than, say, uh, tonight or tomorrow morning. So uh, that could produce some heavy rain. And even on Sunday, I think that uh, we could see some showers and storms around. Uh, right now we have about a 40 to 50 percent chance uh, during the day there on Sunday. There is an outside chance of some stronger storms today. Marginal risk out to the west. That area is shaded in green. And then as we get into tomorrow, it sort of shifts east a little bit. There's a marginal risk even here in San Antonio, probably accounting for some of those storms as they move east. As far as rainfall potential, don't be too scared by this map. Now this is through Wednesday morning, so this is a long period of time that we could pick up rain. But some of the estimates, perhaps up to five inches, but these are going to be localized spots. Not everybody's going to see that much rain. We just got to be very careful, uh, again, with the potential of flooding being there. Upper level winds, sort of an interesting setup here across the country. Uh, we're going to have an area of low pressure drop down into Texas. It's cut off from the jet stream, so it's going to sit here for a couple days. Monday into Tuesday, and so even Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we still could be looking at showers and storms. 92 degrees today, 20% chance of rain. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, and then a 30% chance tonight, 30% chance on Saturday. 60% chance, though, Saturday night into Sunday. We'll keep those rain chances going into Sunday. And then Monday, about a 40% chance. Tuesday it picks up a little bit, but then even more chances Wednesday into Thursday, so it stays pretty active all the way through the seven-day forecast, guys. Some nice reds and yellows on that radar. I like that. <laughs> Very colorful. <laughs> we like the fact that Jakob Pertl is able to talk to some of his NBA fans. These guys, you know, they're trying to stay in contact as best they can. They are, and, you know, Jakob, like the rest of the guys, I think for the most part in the NBA, they want to get back out there and play, but they want to be safe. Of course. So Jakob Pertl having a great season with the Spurs. Also held a Q&A on the NBA Twitter page yesterday. And he was asked what he likes about San Antonio and what's his favorite nickname. Plus, June 8th, rapidly approaching for UIL. That's when limited workouts will be allowed. But everybody got to follow the rules. Coming up. Spurs center Jakob Pertl was having a nice season, his fourth in the NBA and second with the Spurs before play was suspended. He was averaging 5.3 points, 5.3 rebounds on one and a half blocks per game. In this contest in early December against the Rockets, he had six points, five blocks and 15 boards. Yesterday, Jakob held a Q&A on NBA's Twitter page and he was asked by one fan, what is he like most about living in San Antonio and what nickname does he like the most, Blocka or Pertle Jam? Best part about playing in San Antonio are the fans. Our, our fan base is super loyal. They are at a heavy home game making noise. If you go around in the city, um, there's, there's people everywhere supporting the Spurs. And it's, it's really a culture here, so I, I really enjoy that part. And as far as nicknames, um, I think I prefer Pretty Jam. Um, kind of caught me off guard when I, when I saw it for the first time. I thought it was really funny.
And some bummer news today. Basketball Hall of Fame coach and longtime Utah Jazz floor boss Jerry Sloan passed away at the age of 78. The Jazz announced that he died from complications from Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia, which he had revealed diagnosis for in April 2016. He was a no-nonsense head coach and was known for his defensive intensity as a player. The Jazz tweeted, rest easy coach with a heart emoji. June 8 is a key date. That's when the UIL will allow limited summer strength and conditioning programs to begin. While many UIL athletic programs will use this time, it is significant news for Texas high school football, but workouts will be completely different and everyone must follow the new rules. There's a glimmer of hope and that's good positive news. However, you know, we have to be responsible in, in following the, the state and local guidelines and, and, and uh, we have to be sure that we're not just racing through the gates and thinking it's going to be, you know, the, the same as it was last summer. You know, we still got to have a, a, a plan together uh, to ensure the safety of our students and our staff and, and our immediate community members. We are still waiting on those details from the UIL. South Sand head coach Ron Kretz gave us an idea of what the plan could look like. As far as the athletes go, uh, of course, we want y'all here, want y'all safe. Uh, of course, we got to keep our distance, and if we follow National Federation guidelines, uh, we'll be able to work in groups of 10, no more than 10, with one coach, and go through a little circuit like that. Of course, we got to clean and disinfect after every uh, station that we do. Uh, phase one, we won't be able to shower, et cetera, here on campus. But again, those are National Federation rules, not uh, adopted UIL rules. But you know, that's that's what we're heading to. Infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci says football is the perfect setup for spreading COVID-19. But it's got to get changed sometimes because it's nasty and it's gonna stink all the time. Warriors 3.0 Steph Curry rocking the mic. He posted a video singing to his son Cannon to the tune of SWS Week, but Curry's version was all about dirty diapers. Cannon will turn two in July. Thank you very much, Curry. Yeah, karaoke. These guys need to get back on the court. <laughs> you got to do oh, what you got to do cool, to keep huh? your family entertained, right. though. Right, and yeah, Jakob needs a little bit of a haircut, I think. Well, right? What's the mustache? Bushy hair, big old mustache. What's going on There's there? There's a lot of people that need haircuts <laughs> right now. Yeah, That's right. amazing. All right, Larry, thanks. <laughs> you got it. Hey, staff at the new school are trying to give their students a warm welcome ahead of upcoming school year. Now they're hoping to get to know their community. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll show you how they're doing it. And some people have it and some people don't have it to fight the battle against the bulge. Why they may have their biological make up to think. Welcome back. It's 1231. The man who recorded the killing of 25 year old Ahmaud Aubrey, William Bryan, is now under arrest and charged with murder. He is denied having any part in the attack, but today he is in police custody. ABC Zachary Keish has a story. The video of Ahmad Arbery, a black jogger who was shot and killed February 23rd in Brunswick, Georgia, has been seen around the world. Gregory McMichael, a former cop, and his son Travis, both white, have been charged with his murder. This video went viral after Gregory McMichael released it to a local lawyer, believing it would vindicate him and his son. Now investigators say the man who took the video, William Bryan, was working with the McMichaels in pursuit of the young man and are now charging Williams with false imprisonment and murder. We knew that uh, William Bryan had followed Ahmad, that he had used his car to block the path of Ahmad so that he couldn't escape, and that also ultimately he, he recorded his murder and ambush at close range. Arbery's family says they believe Brian was partially responsible for Ahmad's death. He wasn't reacting to, let's say, a scuff or a gunshot. Early on in the recording, Ahmad is just seen running. Part of the, the recording itself gave away his involvement in the, in the crime itself. Brian told ABC News earlier this month that he was cooperating with investigators but would not say why he was at the scene or why he recorded the video. Yeah, I wish I hadn't have been there, but once again, if I hadn't have been there, there wouldn't have been no video. Brian's lawyer says his client was a witness to the incident and committed no crime, saying Brian had no role or involvement in the shooting. The McMichaels have claimed they were trying to make a citizen's arrest and believed 
that the young black man was connected to crime in their mostly white neighborhood in South Georgia. There is no evidence that Arbery committed any crime. He was unarmed and out for a run. The Cobb County DA's office will prosecute the case. We are going to make sure that we find justice in this case. We know that we have a broken family and a broken community down in Brunswick. Williams was arrested without incident. Now, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations took over this case about two months after the shooting happened. Zachary Kish, ABC News, New York. A Pakistani passenger plane carrying 107 passengers and crew has crashed, killing everyone on board. That's according to the mayor of Karachi. The mayor says the plane went down in a crowded neighborhood on the edge of the airport. The aircraft was carrying 99 passengers and eight crew members. Witnesses said the Airbus A320 appeared to attempt to try and land two or three times before crashing in a residential area near the airport. Local television reports showed smoke coming from the direction of the airport. British researchers testing an experimental vaccine against the new coronavirus are moving into advanced studies and they're hoping to vaccinate more than 10,000 people to determine if the shot works. Last month, scientists at Oxford University began vaccinating more than 1,000 volunteers with their vaccine candidate. That, prim that preliminary trial was designed to test the shot's safety. The researchers estimated that if all goes well, in their ongoing trials and the vaccine proves to be effective, it might be possible to make a decision about mass producing it for the fall or early 2021. Outside with live cam, looks like humidity is hanging in the air. A few clouds are about to bust through 90 degrees and we got some wild weekend coming up. It's definitely yeah. humid out there. My hair is telling the story. Uh, the hairometer says it is humid. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, the humidity is way up there. We've got temperatures closing in on 90 degrees. Feels like it's in the mid 90s right now. So the heat index is going to be a big problem this afternoon. Not really seeing that much in the way of rain on the radar or anything like that. You look at right, live radar right now. It's actually very quiet and we suspect that it will stay that way through the afternoon. But as we get into, say, uh, tomorrow night and Sunday, we're probably going to see this radar become a little bit more active. We could start to see some showers and storms developing as a pattern becomes a little bit more active. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on it. And if there is uh, more going on here with the radar, we'll let you know. Uh, we're going to have more on your forecast coming up here in just a bit. We're going to talk about storm chances and potential rainfall amounts that's coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thanks, Justin. If staying thin comes easy to you, it may have something to do with your genes. A new preliminary report says a gene may help some people stay slim. An international scientific team found a genetic variant that's unique to thin individuals. The researchers say the ALK gene, which creates a protein that's involved with cell growth, could lead to a new era in fighting obesity. The findings published in the journal Cell were based on clinical data studying on nearly nearly on nearly 48,000 people who between 20 and 44 years old. I don't have skinny jeans. <laughs> All right, bear with me through this story. Scientists say there's a lot of laughing gas in penguin poop. They did a study on it and published it in the Journal of Science of the Total Environment on Thursday. Apparently, they hung out with some king penguins on the Antarctic island and studied, yep, their poop. It's also called guano. When the poop hits the ground, it reacts with the soil and creates nitrous oxide. And, <laughs> and scientists say penguin poop makes so much nitrous oxide because the bird's diet is made up mostly of fish and krill, which has a lot of nitrogen. Scientists say they're going to have to do a lot more studies on that penguin poop <laughs> to make sure it's not affecting the environment. I, oh my God. <laughs> you made it almost all the way through that one. That was good. That was oh, good. oh, I just That's love just, this story so much. Wow. Who you're gonna, knew that we it's it's going to be so cold down there, and you're going to study poop. Yeah, well, who actually knew that there was like a major study on that? Oh, man. You know? <laughs> oh. A young lady not letting a disability slow her down. Matter of fact, she's getting rewarded for her athletic ability. Larry Ramirez with her story coming up. And if you're looking to save some cash, you might want to take advantage of upcoming tax-free weekend. A look at the products that qualify. That's after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
This weekend you can save money on energy and water saving products. It's all tax free. Tomorrow through Monday, Texans can save money on dishwashers, light bulbs, mulch and more. For appliances like dishwashers and washing machines, look for the Energy Star label. Refrigerators priced at $2,000 or less qualify too. Along with Energy Star ceiling fans, certain light bulbs and even air conditioners priced at $6,000 or less. For toilets, shower heads and faucets, look for the WaterSense logo. Those are tax free as well. If your yard needs sprucing up, you can also save the, on the tax water with, con, with con, water conserving plants, trees and mulch. Some new Promesa Academy students got an adorable welcome today with a little puppy parade. This morning, school staff started visiting the homes of the future students. They drove up in their cars with their signs, some small gifts and of course their pets. Staff will visit each student every Friday until they meet all the new Students. This is a really great opportunity to build community early before August, um, especially because we all don't know what August is going to be like. And it's also a really good way for our future teachers to start to get to know um, our community and start to get to meet our families. So we're really excited about just surprising our kids and giving them a wonderful surprise this morning. What a better way to do that. The new public charter school, as you mentioned, will open in August. The school has not picked a mascot yet. They want the students to help them with that. In the meantime, there'll be the Promesa puppies. Okay. I want, I want a puppy parade. Kind of cool, kind of cute. Justin, is today gonna be a good day for me to take Scooby out to enjoy a nice... Do, do your own puppy parade? Do my own puppy parade? Yeah, sure, why not? You know, it's, it's hot, you gotta be careful. And, you know, speaking of that, I'm glad you brought that up. You gotta be careful with the pets too, right? The cement can get hot. You gotta be careful when taking those uh, pets out, especially during the summer, but temperatures are starting to heat up now. We're up to 88 degrees so far today, 77 the low this morning. So we were well above average for the low temperature. The record is 100 set back in 1989. We won't get there today, but we'll see if we'll add to that rainfall total in the coming days. We've got to look at your forecast coming up. Welcome back. Let's take a look at a picture here on our KSAC Connect. This is from Ramiro 13. Says, uh, nice afternoon. I'd agree with that. A little warm, though. You may want to find a porch or, you know, <laughs> go inside for a little bit uh, with the temperatures the way they are right now. But a beautiful shot. We appreciate it, as always. Let's talk about the beach. Going to the beach this weekend doesn't look too bad. We've got upper 80s. I think Saturday is probably your better day, by the way. Sunday and Monday, rain chances will increase a little bit. And the, the water temperatures in the mid-80s. Rip currents on the low end, but you still got to be careful about that sort of thing. And the chances of raining anywhere from 20 to 40 percent again. Saturday's probably the better day of the two. Monday, Sunday, Monday, uh, it's going to become a little bit more scattered as far as the rain goes. But uh, rain chances really all across South Texas as we get into Sunday and much of next week. Time lapse showing that we had some morning clouds. Those are trying to go away a little bit. We're seeing some sun now. 88 degrees. Two point is at 71. And the heat index all the way up there at 94. That's what it feels like out there. But this humidity as thick as it is. You see the cloud cover. Uh, it's just about everywhere. Just fair weather clouds, though. No big deal. 90 at Port SA, 84. Bernie stage, 90 New Braunfels, 88 right now in Seguin. Most of us are going to be in the 90s this afternoon. 82 Rock Springs, 85 right now in Kerrville. And the current heat index is already up to 100 in Pleasanton. 101 in Katua. It uh, it's going to get worse <laughs> from here on out. I'm sorry to say. Futurecast looks like this. Don't think we're going to see much today. There's just nothing to really trigger any showers and storms. So it looks pretty quiet. But as we get into tonight, and this is really tomorrow morning, seven o'clock. There are some indications that we could get some storms coming in from the north. We saw that last night. Again, it's a low end chance, but it is there. We've got to mention it, and so we'll put in a 30% chance of storms overnight. Then as we fast forward now to Saturday night into Sunday morning, this is midnight on Sunday, we could get a line of storms coming out of Mexico and headed our way, and uh, this could put down some pretty good rain, so we'll have to keep an eye on that time period as well. Even into Sunday, I think uh, we're going to have some chances for rain. It'll be uh, hit or miss Sunday afternoon, uh, but there's enough moisture in place and we're starting to get some lift. Uh, that it's it's definitely possible. And as we look at the big picture here, uh, severe weather across the southeast. We've got another storm system across the plains and then yet another one out across the Pacific Northwest. This one's going to move away, but this is the one I want to watch. Some of that energy is going to dive south, make it into Texas, and then just sort of sit here and drift around. 
that is going to bring rain chances with it. And I think they'll last well into next week. So this is going to be a prolonged period here where we're going to see some rain chances and the pattern is going to be pretty active. Also with that, if we do see some storms developing, A, they could be on the strong side here and there. We're not expecting widespread severe weather. But they're also not going to move much. So that's why we're concerned about uh, the potential for some heavy rain, but it's hard to pinpoint when and where exactly that will happen. 92 degrees today, 20% chance of rain. We're going to go with a 30% chance tonight, 30% chance tomorrow, 60% chance Saturday night into Sunday, and that should carry over some into Sunday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, same story, scattered showers and storms, even Wednesday and Thursday of next week, but this will keep temperatures down a little bit, down into the mid-80s. Guys? All right, Justin. Interesting looking weekend, and you and all your Aggie friends should be really <laughs> happy with what Larry's about to tell you. Okay. Yeah, That's starting uh, June 1st, NCAA has said student athletes can do on campus uh, voluntary workouts. Well, the SEC is now following suit. They are going to allow voluntary on campus workouts. We got the details coming up, plus the Wenzels, Brendan and Carly, are talking about the last dance coming up. of the SEC, the conference will allow voluntary workouts to begin June 8th across its campuses. The decision was reached during a meeting of its 14 university chancellors and presidents today. Universities will have full discretion on whether to return June 8th and must also follow state and local health directives concerning group activities. Graduating high school seniors continue to commit to further their academic and athletic pursuits, including Alexis Cook, who attended the George Gervin Academy. A couple of years after losing her leg in an auto accident at the age of seven, Alexis developed a love for basketball and a determination to succeed, and now she'll be playing for an elite program. KSAT 12 Sports' Jessica Hunt has more. Playing wheelchair basketball since the age of 10, Alexis Cook honed her skills to the point where she's committed to playing for the Lady Moving Mavs, two-time NCAA champions at the University of Texas at Arlington. At the age of 10, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. She was like, that's weird. I don't want to do that. She didn't want to sh push. She didn't want to shoot the ball. She didn't want to hold the ball. That day at the clinic, she made her first basket, and it was it. It was over. Now I'm I'm glad that this door has opened and I see multiple more doors opening as I continue my life. Her journey began with South Texas Regional Adaptive and Para Sports and has played with several organizations since. She's received many tournament MVPs and first team all tournament honors and is ready to contribute next season. I want to bring a lot to the table to the Lady Moving Mavs and to do that I'm going to work very hard. She also wants others to know that with hard work and determination, obstacles can be overcome. If it's your mind that's telling you that you can't fight back because you're strong enough and everyone has that strain. She's showing other people that handicap is mental. You know, you got to get up, you got to move, you got to believe in yourself. And that's what Alexa doing. The most impressive part about Cook's entire story might be the fact that she is a 4.0 GPA and was named the salutatorian for her graduating class. Reporting from the George Gervin Academy, Jessica Hunt, KSAT 12 Sports. Congratulations to Alexis and more hoops news. Brendan and Carly Wenzel are brother and sister and very talented on the court. Brendan was a star at O'Connor High School before going to Utah. Carly led the Panthers in scoring last season at 20.2 points per game. Both watched the Netflix series Last Dance following the Chicago Bulls 1997-98 season. The great Michael Jordan. I realized that I need more dog in me because whenever MJ was like challenged, you know, he took it to a next level. That's what they all talk about. Like, don't challenge MJ whenever you're playing against him because he'll take it personal and he'll, you know, do what he does best. He was a really big competitor. He didn't like to have other people compared to him or be better than him. So I can see that because I don't like being compared to other people or hearing that someone's better than me. It just has, it's a drive, it's a fire in you. Um, it's just like a chip on your shoulder when you play and everything. We will have more on Carly and Brendan Winslow Sunday night on Instant Replay. David, Sarah? Okay. So easy. Wow. <laughs>
not a big deal. You got to get some more dog in you. <laughs> Can't be letting those guys run you I over. I feel pretty motivated after that. Do you? I need to get more dog in me. All Just right. Speaking of motivation, we know there's some fun ideas coming up for Memorial Day weekend with Mike and <laughs> Miss Fiona. Speaking of which, of course, Memorial Day weekend, if you want to get uh, outside with your family, get outdoors. Paradise Canyon, located on the Medina River, is teaming up with Don Strange Catering. We're going to tell you how to reserve a spot and what meals you can enjoy. Plus, May is National Barbecue Month. Look at that. Look at how that worked Ooh. out, right? And what better way to kick off the summer than firing up the grill? Showing us his Jedi ways today is award-winning <laughs> chef and author that traveled thousands of miles and snagged secrets from grill masters across the country. He's Matt Moore, and we're going to share some of his tips and tricks and a yummy recipe. Oh, that looks so good. But if you've been indulging in delicious comfort foods a little too much and are worried about the Quarantine 15, Energy X Fitness shows us how you can target one problem area that affects a whole lot of us. And we want you to share your Memorial Day memories, whether it's a service member in your family or someone you know, a parade that you've attended in the past or a family get together. Share those memories at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see yours in the show when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Yes, indeed.